Hello guys, today I am starting a new series called KSP Resurgence. Now let me fill you in on a bit of lore. Many eons ago, Kerbals used to live on Kerbin, but then Kerbal, Kerbin's parent star, grew old and died. So the Kerbals moved to the Tempest system, which you may know is from the mod Beyond Home. Unfortunately, the Tempest binary system also grew old and died, so the Kerbals also had to find a new home. That's when they found the Harmonia system, a beautiful star with many planets to colonize. The Kerbals colonized a planet which they now call Sanctar. The Kerbals base program has been quite inactive since the colonization began. The only effort they took part in was in the terraforming of Alia, Sanctar's largest and closest moon. But with the terraforming wrapping up, it is now time for the Kerbals to reach for the stars once again. The Harmonia system is from a mod called Celestial Harmony. If Beyond Home raised the bar of planet packs, Celestial Harmony raised it even further. We are now launching our very first rocket of the playthrough. Main knows we have a uh, Chagger install because all the Kerbals are yapping all the time. We also have free AVA in uh, the JSI stuff as well. JSI adds all those cool screens you saw in the cockpit. Main knows we are not using a solid rocket booster this time around. Instead, we're using an ethanol powered rocket. It's from the mod Alcoholic Aeronautics, I believe. And uh, it basically overhaul. It doesn't overhaul it. It changes the uh, tech tree a little bit, just so you start with ethanol-powered rocket tree instead of solid rocket boosters. However, you do un you do unlock solid rocket parts very, very early in the tech tree. Fortunately, we don't have decouplers, so we had to rely on this uh, command pod. Imagine trying to land. I tried landing with the entire rocket without using any decouplers once. It did not end well. We also notice I'm launching during the night. So, uh... Yeah, it's gonna be very dark and you can't see. Thankfully, in the next launch, it's gonna be daytime. We also notice I have sped up the footage a bit because no one wants to see a, a command pod descending in a parachute for five minutes. We have made our very first landing back on... Sanctar. I almost said Kerbin for a second. Now we are back in the tech tree. Get to unlock a few nodes. We don't have enough science for the science junior, but that's how it always works. This is our second rocket. I tried doing a cool shot of the sunrise here. Didn't go the best, though. I've got Bob Kerman in here. He's going to be our scientist. If you're wondering why all the chosen, all the initial four Kerbals are here, even though it's been Billions of years have passed since, since they first started flying rockets. It's best not to think about it. Are Kerbals immortal? Uh, are they just d different Kerbals with the same games and same personality traits by sheer coincidence? It's best not to think about it. I did have a little bit of trouble controlling this rocket, but it all goes well in the end. My main gripe about these engines is that, is that they don't have waterfall support. But thankfully, I hope I think that might be coming soon. If I recall correctly. Maybe. I don't know. The ascent is going along very nicely. We are almost, almost in a hot flying high situation. Yep, there we go. Now flying high. Or it could be a little. You guys start seeing some plasma from the Firefly mod, but you probably can't see it now because I'm in the in the ba in the, the science compartment. Those song those sonic booms that you heard are from the uh, I think they're from Rocket Sound Enhancement. It's also where you're hearing the uh, cool rocket sounds from. I do believe the uh, effing all rockets are still using the default sound though. You're almost in space. Sanctar's uh, Carmen, Kerman line. Not the Carmen line, it's Kerman line from Kerbal Space Program. Is at 72 kilometers high. So you're gonna have to go li just a little bit higher than Kerman. 
Now here I noticed that uh, I was too close to the apoapsis to be to uh, be able to safely coast, so I just kept on burning until it was at a reasonable height. Now I don't really have enough spare delta v to do really anything except just get in orbit and get out of orbit. But this is just our, this is still our second launch, so it looks all good. <coughs> And just like that, we are in orbit. Now we can do all of our orbital science, which would have been too dangerous to do in a suborbital orbital trajectory. Bob's breathing intensifies. Doing some more science very safely because it's in orbit now. We're now back in the command capsule, and we're going to prepare to return to the Kerbal Space Center now. <coughs> although we, although we aren't going to end up in the Kerbal Space Center, I think we might pass it just because trajectories is very accurate. It calculates uh, where you're going to land without separating the heat shield. So when you separate it, the calculations are going to change because the drag is going to be different. Not to mention, when you actually do disconnect it, it's going to be inaccurate because, or at least it is when you're actually in the atmosphere, because it doesn't, it, the calculations change as you get in deeper into the atmosphere. I'm going to speed up this part because reentry is kind of boring most of the time. It's just waiting until you land. Firefly does make it much more fun, though. And it also turns out I uh, undershot the KSC. Oh well. I'm not playing on career, so it's not going to make a difference anyway. I don't have to worry about funding or contracts and all that stuff. I'm just doing a regular science playthrough. I've never really actually done a thorough career playthrough. Who knows, maybe that's another idea for another series. Hopefully that I could do later down the line. This channel takes off. See the beautiful mountains of Sanctar. Really nice. Beautiful. Got all the trees and stuff. Courtesy of Parallax 2.3. Parallax continued. I said Parallax 2 for a minute. We also got very small plants, and we have landed. Welcome back to the tech tree. Getting more stuff. I was going to get advanced to rocket tree, but I was five points short. So, I'm going to make a new rocket this time. This time featuring a Science Jr. Fortunately, I was, I'm was i missing the Terrier engine, so I can't actually make any good rockets. Pug doesn't provide enough and it doesn't provide enough thrust for my stage, so I decide to use a Valiant engine instead. So you'll see, I, I'll replace it in a bit. If you're wondering where all the all the pug the pug and Valiant engine kit come came from, they came from a uh, restock plus. It's like restock, but it adds additional parts instead of just changing them. It also adds a bunch of more engines. Too. I should probably also mention this, you may notice that some of the engines have been running on, instead of liquid fuel and oxidizers, stuff like kerosene and stuff. That's because I have a mod called Chemical Technologies. It does a, it removes stuff like liquid fuel, monopropelling, propelling, and oxidizer. It replaces them with realistic chemicals like kerosene, hydrogen, methane, liquid oxygen, high test peroxide, etc. It's a really good mod. Still a work in progress, though, but it's going to get a lot better in the very near future. Another thing I should mention, I do have Kerbal Colonies installed, which, in case you don't know, allows you to place colonies on extraterrestrial bodies. But the colonies don't actually use parts. They use, like, structures from Kerbal Constructs. So it's kind of like Kerbal Constructs, except you actually have to use rocket parts and ore and stuff to build things. 
She's a lot better than just doing a cheeky approach and just saying, Oh, I, I totally put this there. Yeah, I, I totally... This is totally legit. I didn't just place it here with, for free. Mangoes to the solid rocket boosters have waterfall plumes, courtesy of the mod Avalanche. It's a very underrated mod because normal waterfall, the, the normal waterfall configs don't actually have SRB configs, so you have to get another mod, that being Avalanche. And also, you may notice you're not using solid fuel, you're using something else from Chemical Technologies. We are nearing the part where we separate our solid boosters. Another side note, uh, Avalanche makes it so that when they run out of fuel solid rocket boosters, the plumes don't go away immediately. This is to reflect what happens in real life. See, they, they're they still burning a little bit, but they're not producing thrust. I guess it's just the residue burning off. We are continuing to ascend. Yeah, I can't physics warp too much or else my uh, rocket's gonna crush itself. Can't wait to unlock auto strut. Okay, we got stage separation. I apologize, I apologize for the random sonic booms. It's just rocket sound enhancement tweaking. And we have main engine cutoff, or secondary engine cutoff in this case, I believe. Logging a maneuver. I should probably tell you guys what I have planned for this series. So... First, I'm going to, uh, of course, I'm going to land on every single body in the system. So, so I'm going to land on every planet in the Harmonia system, along with every planet that's added interstellar. Because this mod also adds another star system, the Chaos system, I believe. It's another binary star system, which is pretty nice. There's also another mod in development. It was originally going to be another star system. That was delayed for Celestial Harmony 1.0, but it was delayed due to uh, some issues. It's going to be released as a standalone mod that could also be compatible with stock KSV, the stock system. But of course, it's going to be compatible with Celestial Harmony. So that's going to I'm going to add that when it comes out, and we will go there hopefully. Hopefully, I won't just vanish off of YouTube and stop uploading videos. I tried to go Alia here, which is Sanctar's terraformed moon, but we didn't have enough fuel, so I guess it wasn't meant to be. So we're just gonna go into space high and then just deorbit and go home. Do a query port, and of course do over science since since we're s we do over science since we're just slightly higher than we were before. We, all of our science experiments deliver vastly different results. Because that's how science and Kerbal Space Program works, I guess. You know, how is get, how is running a barometer in the same condition, that being in a vacuum, over and over and over again, just get you science? Just because you're doing it somewhere else, it gives you science. I mean, you d you are learning that. Oh look, it's the vacuum here. There's no atmosphere. But then again, how does it give you so much science? Like, how does knowing that there's hey, there's a vacuum here? How does that tell you how to make beam core antimatter? Hey, look, there's a KSC. Bye, KSC.
Yeah, the trajectory is tweaking out. It thinks we're on a. It, it thinks we're only air breaking, but we're actually going to land. The service module there is now burning up. The only difference is that it's not going to land like we are, because it's going to explode. If it doesn't explode in the atmosphere, it's going to crash. Keep space clean, get rid of space debris. So unfortunately, space debris is going to accumulate really fast in this save. I have plenty of mods in this playthrough, though. I, I'm not going to tell you them all right here, because that would just be a mouthful. Too many account. Countless mods. I probably have a mod list down in the description. If it's not there, it's because I'm too lazy to put it there. There'll be a mod list eventually. Yeah, uh, it's it's not that. It's gonna be down there. Mod list in the description, guys. Just like that, our third landing is a third mission is well. It's almost done. We haven't landed just yet. I tried doing a crew report there, but we didn't get any signs from it, so it was just a waste. We land right by a mountain, right next to a rock. And here we are back at the science facility. Unfortunately, that is all I have time for today, so I'll see you guys next time. See ya!